On this week's show, Tesla CEO Elon Musk hints that 500 mile electric cars will be with us in 10 years' time. BMW and Fisker work together on plug in car technology, and a life cycle analysis of electric versus gasoline proves that even coal powered electric cars are the best choice. These stories and more coming up next on 10. Enjoying today's show on YouTube and want to read the stories we're referring to today? Just head to our website at transportevolve.com forward slash TEN, where you'll find today's show notes, as well as links to the latest feature car news, buying guides, tech primers, and car reviews. It's Friday, November 13th, 2015. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield, and we're this close to reaching our $700 per month donation goal on Patreon. Go on, help us reach it. It's a well-known fact that pretty much everyone who gets behind the wheel of a Tesla Model S electric car falls in love with a luxury electric sedan. And as a brand, Tesla Motors has one of the highest customer satisfaction rates of any automaker out there. Even if a poor recent reliability score on the Consumer Reports Annual Auto Reliability Survey meant it lost its coveted red tick recommendation from the independent test firm. But as we told you on Tuesday, Tesla was awarded joint third place alongside Toyota in the recent biennial North American Suppliers Choice Study, proving that part suppliers love Tesla too. Conducted by Deloitte and Automotive News, the study polls part suppliers in the US to find out what they really think of their automaker customers, scoring them on five key factors – openness to new ideas, ease of working, level of trust, willingness to offer on financial incentives or rewards for supplier innovation, and ability to implement innovations. While BMW and Mercedes-Benz came in first and second place, Tesla was praised for its innovative and open attitude towards suppliers, placing it far ahead of automakers like Honda, Ford, and Volkswagen. Well done. Talking of Volkswagen, it's time to take a look at what's becoming a weekly segment on this show, chronicling the latest in the ongoing Dieselgate emissions scandal. This week, things have been far from easy for the German automaker, with news last weekend that engineers were beginning to come clean about their part in the purposeful transgressions in the emissions department. Some engineers admit to changing tyre pressure and even adding motor oil to fuel in order to make fuel economy tests appear better on the test bench than they were in real life, simply because they said that targets set by former CEO Martin Winterkorn were too tough to achieve. Then we heard the claim a day later that authorities in the US have confiscated the passport of one Volkswagen executive close to the scandal in order to prevent them from leaving the States. All before hearing on Monday that Volkswagen was going to offer owners of 2.0 litre TDI cars in the US a massive compensation package, which included a $500 prepaid Visa card, a $500 sales and service voucher for their local dealership, and three years of free roadside assistance. All told, it will cost the automaker nearly half a billion dollars. And that's before you take into account the cost to retrofit affected vehicles and all those fines Volkswagen has amassed thus far. It's like watching a very massive ship sink very, very slowly. With its BMW i3 and BMW i8 electric cars proving popular around the world, German automaker BMW can genuinely be quoted alongside Tesla Motors, Nissan and GM as being an automaker keen to drive the electric revolution. And this week, it surprised us all by announcing that it will be helping the automaker, formerly known as Fisker, to bring electric cars to market. As we told you on Thursday, Karma, the new name for the Chinese-owned company which was once Fisker, has signed a parts deal with BMW that grants it access to BMW's battery charging system and electric drive technology. Just like Tesla, which sold its battery and drivetrain technology to Toyota and Mercedes-Benz, the new deal will mean that future Karma models will feature BMW technology under the hood, a move away from GM-sourced gasoline engine and drivetrain found in the original Fisker Karmas. It's not clear yet what Karma will do with the BMW technology, but if we had to guess, we'd say it will make an appearance in Karma's new plug-in since the brand declared bankruptcy several years ago. When it comes to the world of electrified autonomous vehicles, Tesla's Model S electric car is probably the vehicle that comes to mind. But as we told you this week, Renault-Nissan CEO Carlos Ghosn is eager to point out that Nissan won't be chasing Tesla in either the electric car or autonomous drive marketplace. Indeed, Ghosn detailed in a Q&A session at last month's Tokyo Motor Show that Nissan's electrified future goal would be in mainstream vehicles, not luxury sedans. 
And as we detailed this week, Ghosn said that Nissan would more likely develop an all-electric crossover before moving into the luxury car segment, reiterating Nissan's focus on developing both autonomous and electric vehicle technology for mainstream buyers. Of autonomy, Ghosn said that Nissan will be capable of fully autonomous cars within the next five years, but their marketability would depend on infrastructure investment from governments around the world, as well as the development of high-quality mapping data. As for Tesla, as Ghosn has said before, it's an ally, not a rival. From one electric car CEO to another, this time in the form of Tesla Motors CEO Elon Musk, who said this week at the 2015 Barron Investment Conference that we'll see a 500-mile electric car on the market within the next 10 years. Explaining that Tesla could already make a 500-mile electric car today using existing technology, but that the physical space required would compromise the Model S's and Model X's legendary load space, Musk said that advancements in battery cell chemistry will mean that we'll see an electric car battery pack in 2025 which will offer 500 miles of range at the same cost and same physical size as today's 250 mile packs. Disclosing that Tesla keeps its eyes on every battery development made around the world, Musk said that advances in cell chemistry would make the longer range pack a reality, but also cautioned that the Gigafactory in Reno, Nevada would also be essential to lowering the production cost to affordable levels to make it happen. Without it, he said, the massive extreme economies of scale Tesla is planning just wouldn't be possible. So here's hoping the Gigafactory continues apace and that we can look back on this show in about 10 years time to find out if Elon Musk is right or not. If you've spent any time at all researching or driving electric vehicles, you'll be familiar with the age old trope which suggests that an electric car is as bad for the environment, if not more, than a gasoline car. Often, such studies use inaccurate fuel mixtures, such as 100% coal-generated electricity, to make their arguments against plug-in cars. But this week, the Union of Concerned Scientists published a study proving the exact opposite. In every US state, electric cars are better for the environment compared to gasoline ones. Using a cradle-to-grave analysis, which takes on board the carbon emissions of a vehicle during its manufacture, use and recycling, the study found that even in states like West Virginia, where most of the electricity is generated from fossil fuels, the average electric car still does better than your average new petrol car. In states like the Pacific Northwest, electric cars were the equivalent of driving a car which gets 94 miles per gallon, while in upstate New York, where most of its energy is generated using renewable sources, it's the equivalent of owning a 135 mpg gasoline car. And for now, there are no ICE cars out there that can manage that kind of figure. We'll leave you to do the math. While we have a large number of plug-in and future car technology vehicles on our Transport Evolved staff car and reader rides fleets, we don't yet have a Tesla Model S. But thanks to our friends at Green Car Reports, we're able to live a little vicariously through the eyes of Tesla owner David Noland, who regularly reports on what life is like with a luxury plug-in. And this week, we heard from David that he's starting to notice the effect of more Tesla electric cars on the roads, longer service waits, and more costly repair bills. As he explained, Tesla used to offer a pickup and drop off service and a flat service fee for a repair range of call out. But now he and other owners are starting to notice that loaner cars aren't always available when they need, booking and service always takes longer than it should, and now Tesla has quietly removed its $100 flat fee for roving technician ranger service. It's something he and other owners are beginning to find frustrating, with owners in areas with lots of Teslas and perhaps less service centers than there should be, reporting that service waits can extend into months, not days. And let's hope Tesla sorts this problem out before it becomes a major headache for the brand. DC quick charging or level two. It's a question that you may not be familiar with if you're not a plug-in owner, but for electric car owners with rapid charging capabilities on their car, it's a question they're always asking themselves when they need a charge while out and about. As we explained this week, it seems rapid charging is the preferred choice, even if customers have to pay a whole lot more than slower level two charging. The data comes courtesy of NRG EVGO, which tracked usage of its Freedom Station electric car charging equipment at 10 different Whole Foods market locations in the San Francisco Bay Area. It found that on average, despite the extra cost, customers would opt for rapid charging by a factor of 12 to 1. 
as several folks have pointed out since, the data could be skewered by Nissan's No Charge to Charge program, which NRG is part of and means charging is free, but it's also prompted a healthy discussion on our website this week, so do make sure you drop by to read the comments in full. And finally, while Volkswagen might be having yet another nightmarish week, its luxury brand Audi tried to put its best foot forward this week by confirming its intent to produce the all-electric long-range Audi e-tron Quattro crossover it showcased at the Frankfurt Motor Show in September. The vehicle, which will offer 310 miles on the NEDC test cycle, will look almost identical to the auto show concept, but won't hit the market until early 2018, which makes us wonder if it will be a little too little too late, given the problems Volkswagen Group is experiencing right now thanks to Dieselgate. We're hopeful this car really will make it to market, but until we see it in person, we're going to have to remain a little skeptical for now. Talking of scepticism, I'm supposed to be heading to Mount Hood this weekend to test winter tyres, but given the weather forecast, it might be more of a water flood than anything else. In the meantime, you'll find all the news that's fit to print at our website at transportevolve.com, catch up with us on Twitter at Transport Evolve, or check out our latest shows on our usual YouTube channel. And if you liked what you saw today, consider keeping us independent and impartial by visiting our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash Transport Evolve and pledging your support from as little as $1, that's less than a pound a month. And because of the way that Patreon works, it doesn't matter if you donate $1 or $100, it really does all help. As always, there's a lot we haven't managed to fit into today's show, including a concept all-electric super sport motorcycle being tested by BMW. We hear from the new owner of our former staff, Nissan Leaf, on how our beloved hero is. GM commits to providing the US military with another hydrogen fuel cell prototype vehicle. And we tell you about a new six-month review we'll be undertaking with the plugless power wireless charging system. So when we're done, be sure to head to our site to read them all. Thanks for watching. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Have a great weekend and until next time, keep evolving.